Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to my channel for another week of some fun crafting adventures. This week we are doing something I am very excited about and have been very excited about for a very long time and I've really been wanting to show this to you for longer than you can probably know and I had to keep it a secret but today I'm going to show you. It is none other than the new Glowforge Aura which is the first crafting laser from Glowforge and it's amazing. Like, I cannot wait for us to get to play with it. I can't wait to cut acrylic. I can't wait to cut wood. I can't wait to do all the engraving, all the embossing, all of the etching, all of the things. But today, we're gonna do something that I've been waiting to do for a long time, which is test it for its iron-on capabilities. Glowforge has its own eco vinyl alternative that can be heat pressed onto fabrics of all kinds and it boasts a way more intricate cut than you can get with a normal cutting machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette because it uses the laser. So today we are gonna to try to cut a very intricate design with their Eco Iron-On alternative and we're gonna see how it stacks up. So without further ado, let's get into what you're gonna need for this project and then let's make the cutest little What Would Dolly Do shirt that you have ever seen in your life. Okay, so first what you're gonna need for this project is a Glowforge Aura. You're also gonna need their Iron-On Eco Heat Transfer. It looks like this in the package. Very cute. Each one of their little packages comes with three sheets of vinyl in it. And we're gonna talk about why it's special and what makes it proof grade and all that as we get into our project. But for now, just know you're gonna need that. And then I'm actually making this shirt twice, once on a tank top and once on a t-shirt. So if you wanna do that with me, you're gonna need a tank top and a t-shirt. I'm using this cream color comfort colors tank top and this lavender color comfort colors t-shirt. Then I'm just gonna be using the Eco Heat Transfer Vinyl Alternative on both of those that we will cut with our Glowforge and then adhere with a heat press. So you will also need a heat press of some kind or you can use a regular iron if that is what you have with you at your house. Okay, as for colors for your iron-on, I'm gonna be using this metallic glitter pink for my cream colored tank top and then I'm gonna use just a simple white for my lavender t-shirt. And really, because we're just using the Glowforge for this project, that's all you need. You're gonna need a weeding hook and you might want some scissors, but other than that, that's it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do before we do anything else is we're gonna open up the hood of our Glowforge Aura and we're gonna place our material QR code side up in the machine. And what I mean by that is all of Glowforge's proof grade materials have a little QR code there in the bottom. You can see it there on the screen. And you just wanna slide it right into the bed of your Glowforge so that that QR code is visible and facing up. And then you can go ahead and shut your top. The Glowforge is gonna hum to life a little bit when you do that. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> The noise you hear in the background is also the Glowforge's personal air filter that is attached to the back of the Aura. It's super amazing because with the Aura, you actually don't have to vent to the outside. You can just vent straight through the attached air filter and it really reduces 99.9% .9 of all of that nasty fumage that you don't wanna be breathing in when you're using a craft laser. Okay, she seems all set to go. So now we're gonna hop over to the computer and I'm gonna show you the Glowforge app and how setting up your cut works and then we get to do the exciting part. Okay, so here we are in the Glowforge app and as you can see, the little camera inside the Aura will show us what it looks like in the print bed. It's called Aura Vision and it's super useful for aligning intricate cuts and for just kind of seeing what your Glowforge is up to before and after so you can really put your materials and your cuts exactly where you want on the material that you just put in the bed. What we're gonna do first though is something a little unique and we're gonna go up here to this insert shape button and I'm gonna drop a little line into my print bed here. If I can get it to move, there we go. And I'm just gonna put it a really small like two inch line up here in the top. And then I'm also gonna drop in a little square and make it really tiny. And I'm gonna drop it up here in the top. We're just gonna do a little test cut using this line and this shape because I want to make sure that the cut settings are perfect before I have it cut out my entire Dolly Parton design. 
And that's something you really want to keep in mind when you're using a craft laser is that the cutting time is significantly longer than what you're probably used to with like a Cricut or a Silhouette. And that's because it's using a laser, which just takes longer. So because this cut could take upwards of an hour, I'm going to do a test cut, make sure my settings are perfect and that it weeds how I want it to. And then I'm going to set the Glowforge Aura to go ahead and cut. And I'm going to get some other work done while it's cutting. But doing that test cut will ensure that you don't wait the whole time for it to cut your design and then it's not how you want it. <laughs> okay, so back to the screen here. You can also see that the Glowforge has already used this QR code to read the material that's in there and it knows that I'm using Eco White Iron On which is really cool and another awesome feature of Glowforge, which is that I don't have to specify what material I'm cutting on. If I'm using those proof grade materials from Glowforge, it's gonna automatically know what I'm using by reading the QR code, and it will internally adjust its cut settings to match the perfect speed and pressure for that material. So one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna go in here to my cut, and I'm gonna go to manual. And I'm gonna make sure that it's just passing over one time, which it is, that's great. And we've got it set to 100 speed, which is awesome. So even though the Glowforge Aura Vision is reading that QR code and giving you a precise cut setting for that uh, material, you can still go in and manually customize those settings if you know you want a specific look, or once you get really used to your Glowforge and you know how it cuts, you can make some adjustments um, from that level as well. Right here is also where we could set it to engrave instead of cut or score instead of cut, or we could have it just ignore a layer entirely as our layers kind of start to stack up here. So that's just a few of the settings here in the Glowforge app, but we're not gonna get too much into that today. Instead, we are just gonna go ahead and press print and let it do this little test cut. And that's just as easy as looking up here the Glowforge app is telling me that it's ready, everything's connected, and I can even hit this drop down menu right here, and it's showing me that my Glowforge Aura is attached, as is its little air filter. So everything is safe and ready to go, and then I can just hit print. And the camera is going to go ahead and focus on my material, it's going to make sure it has room to do what it needs to do, and then it's going to start cutting. Okay, so now that my Glowforge has verified the alignment and it's made sure everything is good to go, you're going to see the button will flash right here on the top of your Glowforge, and you can just press it once it's flashing and it will start the test cut. You can hear that air filter coming to life and the Glowforge coming to life, and it's just going to get that test cut going, which will take about 15 seconds. Okay, so our test cut is done, so we can go ahead and open up the lid, pull out our material, and then we're just gonna take a little look at this test cut and make sure that everything cut correctly before we go on and have it cut our entire design. So I'm just gonna find my scissors. I'm gonna go grab a weeding hook. Okay, let's check out this test cut. Cause we had it cut a pretty intricate little line there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off that little section that we test cut. Make sure the Glowforge didn't cut through the backing so that we'll have an easy time weeding this design when all is said and done. So this actually did a great job. It's a little bit of a deep cut. It did cut through the backing a little bit. You can see I can just tear out the whole thing instead of being able to just weed away from the backing. So I'm gonna lower the pressure just a little bit. We're gonna do another test cut and then we're gonna be ready to cut our full design. So here in Glowforge, I can actually put my Eco Iron On back in there. Close it up. My camera will refresh here in just a second. There it is. Now I can move my little square down. I'm not gonna do this line again. I am just gonna put it in the very corner because I don't want to waste too much of this sheet here. And then I'm going to go to my cut settings, go to manual, and I'm just going to drop that power down just a little bit. Looks like I can barely drop it down. So I'm just going to drop it down to 0.08, and then I'm going to go ahead and press print. We're going to let it do one more test cut, and then we're ready to cut our design. Since you've already seen the test cut happen, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video right here, and I'll come back once this test cut is done to save us a little bit of time, and we'll jump right into cutting our dolly design, which I cannot wait to show you. So I'm going to press go on the Glowforge, I'm going to stop you here, and I'll see you back when we're ready to do our design for real. Okay. <laughs> 
After testing out a few different cut settings, I am finally ready to go and cutting my Dolly Parton design. I definitely, I decided to do some custom settings and change the pressure and change the speed a little bit to get it exactly how I wanted it and make sure it doesn't cut through that backing layer so that, that way it's an easier weeding time. Um, if you're a StarCraft user, if you've used the StarCraft Solo or a Silhouette, that's something that you're probably familiar with. And I personally love it. I love setting custom cut settings that are just perfect for me. And that's one thing I really, really am enjoying about the new Glowforge Aura. But let's hop back over to the computer and let's get our new design loaded in and ready to print. And then we'll be off to the races. Okay, so here we are back in the Glowforge app. You can see that I've set my new custom settings and I named it Eco Iron On so that I can remember it for later. If you're curious what those were, after a bunch of testing, I finally settled on a speed of 40 and a power of 9.1 with one pass. Gives you a really perfect, clean weeding experience for that Eco Iron On. I'm actually going to go back to my dashboard and go to my designs and bring in my file here, create new design, upload a file. I'm going to grab my file that I've made here. Okay, so our design has been loaded in. I'm going to go ahead and put my eco iron on onto the print bed. I did grab a new sheet just to make it a little bit cleaner, but you could definitely use an existing sheet that you did a test cut on just resize or move your design over to make sure you're not gonna double cut on an area that's already been cut, but we don't have to worry about that. You can see here on my computer that it went ahead and refreshed the print bed. And now I'm just gonna drag over my whole design and move it away from the little QR code there. Although it doesn't matter if you do cut over that, it just might mess with your print settings just a smidgy. Um, so then, now that it's all selected, I'm going to go over here and select to flip it horizontally because this is iron-on, so we do want to mirror our design. We are safely away from our little QR code there, and I'm going to resize this a little bit because this is pretty big. I want it to be about 8 inches in width here. That's a pretty good size for a full front of a shirt, so I'm just going to bring it over. You can see this little blue highlighted section here will tell us the size of our design. So if I dragged it over to be in line with one, we'd be just around that eight or that seven inches actually in width mark. Sorry, my math was bad there. So we actually want to make it a little bigger. I'm going to make, I really want it to be more like eight. So that's about eight. Um, I think that looks about good for me. I like to choose, really go between seven and a half and eight on full front shirt designs. So we're mirrored, we are good to go. Now I'm gonna go make sure my custom settings are in here. So I, I selected to use the cut setting, which is why my iron-on thing wasn't coming up. I didn't have anything selected yet, so it didn't know what to pull from, but because that setting I created earlier was a custom cut setting, I had to select cut first. So now that's selected, I can select my Eco Iron-on custom cut setting there. And you can see in this little spot right here that it's going to be 40 speed and a 9.1 in pressure, which is exactly what we want. And that is ready to cut, my friends. This is going to be really cute. I cannot wait for you to see it done. So I'm going to go ahead and press print, and it's going to start auto-focusing and adjusting the print head. And then it's going to give us a little estimate right here of how long this print is going to take. Probably around two hours because it is so intricate. So I will probably hop off of here and I'm gonna get a little bit of work done and then I will hop back on and we will see this print when it's complete. I'm definitely gonna show you some shots of the Aura cutting as well because it is truly amazing. So let's watch it cut a little bit, take a little break, and then we'll catch you back here for adhering it to our shirt. Okay, so the Glowforge just finished cutting, so we're gonna go ahead and heat up our heat press while we are about to be weeding our material. So you're gonna wanna set your heat press to, you just saw it a second ago, it's 330 degrees Fahrenheit and your time is gonna be 15 seconds. You are gonna wanna use a medium to firm pressure on this, but while this heats up, let's hop over back to the table and let's weed our design that we just cut. 
Okay, our Glowforge has finished printing, so now it's just as simple as lifting the lid and pulling out our completed cut. And now it's time to weed it just like we would regular vinyl. Okay, so we can also go ahead and trim our material just a little bit, just like we would on a normal heat transfer vinyl sheet. So I'm just gonna trim this down to make the weeding process a little easier. This is where we also get to be thankful that we set our custom cut settings exactly to our liking, because this is about to be way easier to weed. Also, if you've never used a laser before, you're gonna see something that looks like singeing and burning, but don't worry, it does not go through to your material. It just looks that way on the side in which it cut. That's part of the reason why using proof grade materials is such a big deal when you're cutting with Glowforge because it has a special coating on both sides to prevent any of that singeing or burning from getting through to your actual design and your actual material. So I'm just going around the edges first. It's very satisfying, as you can see. <laughs> weeding away that excess, leaving behind our carrier sheet, just like normal heat transfer vinyl. This is where a laser can really outdo a regular blade-based cutting machine because the cuts can be so intricate because we used a laser that it really allows you to kind of level up the cut file that you're using. Like you can see all these tiny little cuts we've got in here that just would not be possible on a normal cutting machine. And as we continue to weed away, you're gonna really see it come to life. All right, let's just get the insides of our letters and then we are ready to press this on our shirt. If you've got a bunch of pieces that are wanting to stick behind, you could also come in with like a little piece of tape and pull those up, like the ones that are sticking to my hand and sticking to the sheet here. If you want to, you don't have to. Part of the, I think the thing that makes designs like this look good is the little inconsistencies because it gets like that retro look. All right, I'm just gonna check out my design really quick and make sure I'm not missing any pieces that I really wanted to weed away. Okay, now let's just flip it over. See how we look. I've got some pink pieces left behind from my weeding of the other ones. Let's pull those away. I think this looks pretty phenomenal. Just making sure there are just like a couple more pieces I really wanna pull away like here. And you can just keep repeating this process of like pulling those additional tiny little spots away until you're really happy with the look. Cause there's a ton of these little dots and stuff that you could just pull away for forever and they weed easily, but it's your hook that's gonna be the limiting factor for you. So just pull until you're happy and then go heat press it. I think I'm pretty happy with mine, so let's hop over to the heat press and adhere this to our shirt. Okay, so first we are just going to lay down our shirt by itself and press it so that it, we get any wrinkles out. Then we will add our design. All right, so now we place our design, make sure we're good and even really want to make sure and bring it down far enough on the shirt here. Setting our design firmly in the middle, hoping it's placed how we want it, <laughs> and then giving it a firm press for 15 seconds. I'm gonna let it cool for just a second. I'm gonna press it a second time, not even for the full time. And now we're gonna let it cool off before we peel it. We are now just gonna wait for it to cool a little bit and then we are ready to peel. This part is always the scary part because it's like, what if it doesn't work? It always does, but I always get scared no matter what. <laughs> Especially when you have like these really intricate parts. Just a little bit scary. This is a warm peel. So you don't want it to be totally cool when you peel it, but you also don't want it to be hot. Peel beautifully. I also press it one more time really quick just to really adhere it. Not even gonna time it. My heat press is actually off. I'm just gonna press it a little bit. There you have it, friends. A very fun, what would Dolly do? Purple shirt and a pink version too. Just so you can see what both colors look like. What would Dolly do? Cut with precision by our Glowforge Aura. So there you have it, friends. Our very first Glowforge Aura tutorial, step by step, and we made these amazing What Would Dolly Do shirts using Glowforge's own Eco Iron-On Vinyl Alternative, which weeded beautifully, 
cut beautifully and allowed us to do these really intricate cuts that just wouldn't be possible on a blade based cutting machine. I'm thoroughly impressed. I had a really good time making them. Shocked at how easy it weeded. Shocked at the result. Really excited to do more Eco Iron On with Glowforge Aura, but definitely subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss a thing. We're going to be doing tons more Glowforge Aura tutorials over here. Next week we're going to work with some wood. We're probably going to do some fun acrylic projects and so much more after that. You definitely don't want to miss it, especially if you're interested in this product or if you've been thinking about buying a crafting laser for your Etsy business or just for fun for your crafting hobby, definitely keep coming back. I'll keep showing you what this machine is capable of so you can make sure to make an informed decision for you. If this has sold you on it and you know you need a Glowforge Aura, then you can go ahead and get one at Michael's or Joann's. I promise you won't regret it, <laughs> but also I hope you'll come back and hang out with me some more as we keep testing this machine to see what it can do. So until next week, happy crafting and have a wonderful rest of your week.